Okay, this is task six, disc brake inspection. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to have you get in a car and check uh, the total brake pedal travel. You're going to be checking that. You're going to be looking at the brake fluid reservoir and telling me what level is the brake fluid reservoir at and what kind of condition is the fluid in. Um, the fluid should be a nice, light, golden brown, almost the color of, of honey, um, or lighter in color. If it's dark, if it's brown, if it's dark brown, if it's black, um, that's no good and it needs to be replaced. Okay. Also, you want to check the vacuum assist operation. You want to make sure the brake booster is working properly when you start it up. And go ahead and just read number four for how you do that. Um, it's very easy. Okay. So then I'm going to give you a, a bench disc brake assembly, similar to our drum our brake assemblies. Uh, but I'm just going to use our model here to um, show you what to do. But come to me and I'll show you where that's going to be set up as far as the one that's going to be attached to a bench for you to work on. Um, but we're just going to go with this. Um, we're going to, first thing, we want to check our pads for wear. Um, we want to see how much, again, is left here between our backing plate and the rotor. And this is approximately three-eighths to half of an inch. So we want to note down how much pad is left, and then we need to do a little bit of math as far as how many miles this will go. And it will vary. This is just a general equation on how to do that. The next thing we want to do is check our rotor discs right here for any, any hot spots or warping or overheating, again, or, or cracking even. We want to look for little cracks that might be in here. Or if it's overheated, this would be very discolored like the rotors we've seen in uh, PowerPoint that I've shown you. Okay. Um, once we get that, we'll go ahead and, and note that if it's cracked or warped, overheated, uh, we can go ahead and note that down. Now, the main measurements you're going to be making are rotor runout, and so we're going to be measuring the runout of this rotor and rotor parallelism to see how, how parallel these are all the way around. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our dial indicator. Okay? What we're going to do is this comes in a box, and you have to kind of put this together. Um, this part screws on to our vice grips. Um, make sure that where you attach these vice grips is not going to move. It gives us some room. Okay, so that's good. We want to give that a, a tug. And then I want to put this somewhere where it's not going to hit as I spin this, because I'm going to have to turn this by hand and watch the dial. So I don't want the bottom of this hitting my lug nuts as it spins around. So you want to lift it up a little bit and you want to go about straight on. Um, go ahead and turn this little red lever down here until it tightens up and it should be tight and this arm shouldn't move. Okay, so we're going to go around on this side and show you what it looks like from the top. So the first thing we want to do is to make sure that this isn't going to move. And what we do is you just pull this back a little bit maybe just an eighth of an inch, and we make sure that our needle here isn't going to move on us. And it's stay, staying right between, well, I'm going to turn this a little bit. We're going to zero this out. Very, do it very gently because if you touch this, um, you can actually move the arm and then you have to re, readjust everything. So we're just going to check this. I'm just dial that back a little more. And then I'm going to check it one more time. Okay, it's staying right on zero, or right below zero. I'm just going to go like this and try it one more time. That's good. Okay, now what I'm going to do is actually spin the rotor and watch my dial here. So it's going from zero up to one, and going back down to zero, and one, oh, that went to two, well, and zero is going a little lower, one, So we have run out of approximately one thousandth of an inch that it's moving. It's going from zero back to one, back to zero, back to one. So our spec, or what we're getting, is about one thousandth of an inch in run out. Right? How much is moving in and out and in and out and in and out. It's about one thousandth of an inch. That's point zero zero one. So we want to note that in our lab packet. 
Uh, the other thing you want to do, I'm just going to loosen this and get it out of the way since we took that measurement. The other thing we want to do is use our micrometer. Go ahead and open this up. Takes a little time here. But I'm going to go ahead and measure in about four spots. So I'm just twisting it by the barrel here. Again, I don't turn this to crank it down. And I want to check what my measurement is. And you want to go down about at least a quarter of an inch below the top surface of the rotor, or the, the outer diameter of the rotor. Go in about a quarter of an inch. And I'm measuring about, let's see, 8, and then I'm at the 50 plus 17. So I'm at about 8.867 of an inch, 0.867. So I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to turn this about 90 degrees. I'm going to measure it again. I'm about the same, and again, I'm using this the wrong way. I want to just turn the barrel right here, this little ratchet, and it stops at 0 .0 again. Loosen it, turn it again, and I'm at 0.867 again. Okay, so that's fine. Um, you're not going to be doing it on this, you're going to be doing it on another rotor, so it may have some out of parallelism. Um, you may not get the same number here all the time, okay, and that's fine. We just want to note what you get and see if it's parallel or if it's not parallel. Okay, and you're just going to note that in your packet as well. Uh, you also will have some information as far as what the spec specification should be or what the range is, and you're going to need to note that here as well. Okay, um, you have two columns here for the right and left as far as what you measured. I'm only going to require you to, you to do uh, one side, so just use one column. We're not going to be doing two columns unless you have a lot of free time. Um, we're just going to be doing one rotor, and that's it. So you're going to need to look up the specs in our reference book and then measure one rotor or one wheel assembly with the, with the disc brakes on the bench. Okay. So once you have that done, we're going to go ahead and remove the um, calipers here. I don't, you can't see them when we zoom out. Okay, we're going to go ahead and remove the calipers here and inspect the piston and the pads, make sure they're good. So let me swing this back away. Okay, so we need to take off our calipers. And so what we need to do is loosen our guide pins here. Um, go ahead and I'll give you the right ratchet, or size you need for the one you'll be working on. I'll go ahead and take these pins out. them somewhere where you're not going to drop them or lose them. Take this one out as well. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and take our assembly out. This one comes out from the top like this. And I just want to, I'm just going to put it this way so we can see what's going on. Okay, um, we want to take out this one first, and it's got this little clip right here. You're going to have to lift that up a little bit. You may need a pry bar just to kind of lift that up. If not, you can get it with your finger, that's fine. Pull that out of the way. Okay, and then this one here just pops forward. You can see on this side, you've got this spring right here that fits into this piston right here. So we want to look and make sure that our piston seal is good right here that we have no brake fluid leaking out of the piston. Okay, I'm looking for any brake signs of brake fluid or anything leaking at this point. Um, I'm looking for these little rubber boots. Um, these boots cover the slides. Turn this way so you can see. Cover these slides here. So this should move nice and easy. Same with this one down here. It should move nice and easy. If these split or break or crack, these are going to start binding up the, the guides or the slides for our sliding caliper. So we want to always want to inspect these as well, make sure they're in good condition. So once we've checked this out, um, we can go ahead and reassemble this. We have no leaks. Seals are good. Seals here are good. So we're going to go ahead and put this back together. Okay. 
Now, this pad, right, the one that goes into the piston, uh, is going to go first. So we need to slide this in here and just push it in. Okay, once we have that there, we're going to put go ahead and slide this one in on over the outside here. Okay, we got that in. Okay, now we're going to bring this over and slide this in over our caliper. Now this is a little tricky because it goes in the bottom, cooks in the bottom first. And then goes over the top. So let's make sure we get it in. Now sometimes these guides on the bottom, the slides, get in the way. So we got to make sure that those are out of our way. And once we have that locked in place, then we can go and put, it, put our, our bolts for our guide pins back in. Again, we always want to start these with our finger. You never want to start these with a ratchet. That prevents us from cross threading this and damaging the threads every single time if we can do it by hand. If they don't go in nicely by hand, um, come get me. Please do not put a ratchet on this because we want to make sure we do not cross thread this and damage it. So once these are in and they're all snug down by hand, go ahead and take your ratchet, go ahead and set it to tighten, right? We're going to turn it to the right. So go ahead and tighten this down. And I don't need a super tight. This is just for sample. But you will have to look up in the book that you looked up the parallelism, the torque for these two bolts right here, as well as the torque can't see it here, but the torque for your lug nuts as well. You need to write both of those down in your lap packet as well, because um, that's a big part of reassembling the mess, that these are torqued properly, and the lug nuts on the front here are also torqued properly. Okay, so once you have those measurements down, go ahead and bring me your paperwork, and we'll get you signed off.